Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This week's show, where I talk about TV shows and crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Season 1, Episode 4. Another great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So it's John and Jane's day off, and they're at the market, like, getting produce and stuff like that. I love it. It's like, oh, like... The peppers. It's like, no, 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 the peppers we have growing in the garden. Are She's like, stop. I've never eaten anything out of that garden. It's like, no, nah, I've been kind of sneaking it in there. You've eaten a toe already. You just don't know it. What was really interesting is they end up running into an ex of John's, which luckily the conversation, I mean, you you think stuff like that, well, I guess it's like, you, you're just going to do that. But I think it's so interesting the way the conversation is constructed at no point. Does, like, you know, John's real name come up in conversation? It's just kind of like, a, no, oh, hey, hey, you. So I think that's so interesting, like, how they, like, write that right around that, too. Because it's like, right, why would you... I mean, the fact is, I think it's, it just speaks volumes, and I think that's just for the audience's sake of they're only John and Jane to us, who they were before it's gone, because we never knew their real names. So I think it's supposed to kind of still keep that separation, but it's also just interesting, because I mean, I get it. Like, why would you be like, hey, like, why would you go out, like, only, like, if you were injured, like, if she had, like, a new significant other or whatever, and was like, oh my god, this is an old friend of mine, so-and-so, but she didn't. Um, so I just think that's so interesting when you think about it. But yeah, running into an ex, you think that would complicate things, but I guess it's like, I mean, I guess as you keep, long as you keep it a secret about how much your mom knows, because that was also the thing I had last episode too of like, well, does the company not know? Do they really not know? They do a deep enough background check on you. They keep enough, keep up with enough of your progress. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. They put you out there in the wild. You do your mission, fine. You fail. We're going to have an issue. Other than that, just do whatever you want to. As long as it doesn't compromise you or the company, it's fine. We'll, we'll see if there end up being any lasting effects from like his mom being in the know. So, either way. I thought it was so interesting the moment Jane was like, man, I thought, I can't, I was actually kind of surprised by you, but the fact of the matter is that you are totally okay with that. It's like, oh, that's actually kind of a good thing. He's like, what are you talking about? That she has one hand. He's like, what? She doesn't have one hand. She has two hands. Did she have two hands when you were dating? I was like, yeah. But she's like, wait, you don't know for sure? Yeah, like, we had sex, and I'm pretty sure she had two hands. He's like, really? He's like, yeah, that was the foundation of our relationship. And he started, like... As we find out later on, she was gaslighting him. She's she's really good at that. I love that. That's she said it so. I even to the point was like, wait for real? Did I not notice that? Rewound it. If you notice, they made a point to shoot that to shoot that like you can't see her left hand. Even you're like, wait, did she not have a left hand? They purposely shot that so that like her hand is like her left hand, her right hand is always in. You can see her right hand clearly in frame a lot. You can never see her left hand because it's either like covered up by like a jacket or something or just not in frame. And I was like, that's so interesting. Because I like the fact that Jane immediately picked up on that. It's like, oh, I'm gonna gaslight you a little bit. And that's insane. I thought that was just that was just so interesting because I was like, wait, did she really only have one hand? Not like it mattered, but I was like, I was like, no, it feels like she's messing with him, but maybe she's not. Maybe it's like, wow, you. But the fact is, even he was second guessing because it's like I don't remember. Did she not have? Did she only have one hand back then? It's like that kind of speaks volumes about you that you don't remember. But it's like who knows how long ago him and Rooney were a thing? You know, it's, it's just it's just so interesting. But either way, let's get this. They're day off, and they end up running into another John Smith. I was like, that's interesting. I was like, wait, are you? And then our John notices this John's um, card. I was like, okay. So it answers a question I had since, like, the first episode. I'm like, are we going to find out, like, did Alexander Skarsgård and Isaac Gonzalez's John Smith and Jane Smith get replaced by Donald Glover and Maya Erskine as John and Jane? But it's like, no. I, but I'd also thrown out there, like, maybe there are multiple John and Janes out there that are completely unaware of each other. Turns out that's the case. I thought it was so interesting, too, when John, as he referred to him, uh, is John number two, or the other John, was kind of like, oh, yeah, first time we've ever run into other Smiths by accident, which I was like, that's interesting phrasing. I latched on to that. I was like, do you kill other Smiths or something? Are you the people they call in that take care of them? Maybe not exclusively, but they have. They talk about it later on. They That, uh, that other Smiths, they do kill other Smiths. I was like, I thought, so that makes me wonder, like, Speaking of Alexander Skarsgård and Isaac Gonzalez, like the, the John and Jane that got killed at the beginning of this series, 
was that another John and Jane that were hired to kill them? I was like, that's interesting. So that wasn't just maybe, maybe that wasn't maybe those were just company people. But I mean, J J the other John and Janes are company people. But still, like maybe they send another John and Jane to kill them. But uh, like I say, I because I latched onto that specific phrasing. I was like, that you phrase that in a very specific way of like you're the first John and Jane that we've come we've run into accidentally meaning like every other john and jane you ran into it was on purpose so why would you purposely meet someone unless you're purposely set out to kill them like what other reason would the company send you to go after them? like have you purposely meet them so i thought that was so interesting but yeah i mean for them it's like we haven't really seen them have any couple friends the closest thing we got was last episode i guess to some extent where it's like in, in twofold where it's like the older couple that john was trying to be friends with jane kind of wasn't having that she she isn't about the vacation friends whereas like they both separately kind of bonded with parker and gaval so it's like it's not really the couple thing so it's like hey this is like our first couple friends they're in our world they had their ideas about what the company situation is like it's like a 9-11 uh like intelligence agency kind of response or whatever but for them it's the first time they get to talk to someone and they get to be kind of honest and open and everything's good we get to, oh my god we get to talk to other people and they are a little nervous about it because from what we've seen they've never had anyone over to their place so this is the first time it's happening plus it's other people they, they've been in this game a little longer what can we learn from them it's like they're kind of a little nervous you know having like the first like couple friends over and stuff like that so I, I, I didn't realize this until I like, looked it up. The actor who plays the other John uh, is Wagner Mora. Uh, I've never seen Narcos, but he's the, he's the actor who played um, Pablo Escobar. I was like, oh, that's neat. I've heard nothing but good things about Narcos. It's just one of those shows I've just never circled back to, but I need to. Uh, but uh, Jane is played by Parker Posey. I was like, yo, Parker Posey, which Netflix-wise, I best know her from um, Lost in Space. Uh I, I think I, it wasn't until she popped up in the episode. I was like, oh, right. I did see like an image or something uh, from this show with her in it. And I just, I didn't put it together. I was like, oh, this is the double data. That was from the double data episode. That's interesting. Um, but I, I really like them meeting other Johns and John and Jane because it really opens their eyes to a lot of stuff that they weren't aware of. I mean, it puts into question, I, it, it's kind of that interesting thing of like, oh, you thought like, oh my God, you guys seem so cool and so fun, but then it turns out you're not as compatible because a lot of their stuff, they kind of judge you on your stuff of like, you know, it's like, oh, you have a fail. Uh, and all the time we've been doing this, we've never had a fail. So we don't know what that's all about. And then they find out there's an actually higher risk than what they're at. They're at high risk. There's super high risk. And apparently there's low risk. It's like, oh my God, the people who deliver our packages, like the the, the things for our missions and stuff. Like, oh my God, the low risk. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. It's like stuff like that they're picking up. And also, when they brought the f up the fact, it's like, oh yeah, we made a pact that if we made enough money, we'd go our separate ways, but obviously things have changed. And then, specifically John, but Jane joins in, the other John and Jane are like laughing up a storm, and you can see both our John and Jane kind of shrink into themselves, like, I don't know why that's so fun. And then the other John's like, oh yeah, like the company, oh, can you imagine if the company was that open-minded, like, oh, they're just going to let you go? It's like, makes sense. You know too much. They're not just going to let you go. It's like, yeah, you're in this for life until you either die or we... Because I, I don't think there's any quote-unquote retirement. Once again, playing into... Because uh, I've come... Keep going back to it. Like our first John and Jane, we don't know why. Like I, like I posited, oh, did they run away because they were tired? Or then later on, I'm like, okay, we found out about the fail system. You fail three times, you're out. Did they fail three times and they had to go on a run because they knew they were going to be hunted? that type of stuff we still don't know the clear reason why they were on the run so it it, it, it opens you know a few possibilities we also find out like apparently you can switch your john or jane at any point in time because he wasn't compatible with his jane and got a new jane so this John and Jane have been together for a couple of years, so it's like once again learning that. Once again, learning a little bit more about the company because even they don't know really everything. So they were asking like, "Oh, what's your uh, relationship like with your uh, soup? You're like your supervisor." Which I immediately was like, "Oh, they haven't met their supervisor, but they're talking about like, oh, you mean Mr. Hi Hi? It's like Hi Hi. It's like well, he said Hi Hi. So it's like oh yeah, it's kind of a cutesy thing. So I was like, oh, so he, that's considered your supervisor, which I'm like." 
is it the same supervisor all across the board? Like everyone has the same supervisor or does each John and Jane have their own supervisor? So is Mr. High High different from the other John and Jane's um, supervisor? Because once again, I kept thinking that the person in their lives that probably is their supervisor and they just don't know it is Paul Dano. Could we see him again this episode? Because Jane's talking to him. So it's interesting when John ends up running into his ex. Now, um, Jane's over here talking it to, up to the hot neighbor, which is kind of like, which obviously does bother him, but he didn't like bring it up to Jane. But it's like, oh, you're having a lengthy conversation. Makes you wonder, does she also kind of do that a little bit just, but it's like, oh, like, she's probably not thinking much of it. I don't know. But yeah, like also uh, the other John and Jane, like not chastising, but being like, oh, wow, like you guys, uh, you guys didn't immediately hook up. It's like, no, we kind of made a promise like not to have sex together because it's like, yeah, we thought that would kind of interfere with her. It's like, oh, but the moment we met, we couldn't keep our like arms off each other. So it's like, well, they're having sex now because Jane was all up. The other Jane was all up in their business being like, oh, yeah. So like, uh, what's it like romantically and stuff like that? It's like, what are you asking us, you fucking weirdo? Like, do you really ask that to a couple you just met? Like, come on, like, let's, let's, you know, uh, have a few get-togethers before we start getting that personal with the information, so. I also kind of felt uneasy when Jane was showing them around. It's like, oh yeah, this is where we keep our guns. I was like, probably the, this is before they found out, but I'm like, probably the last people you want to know where you keep your guns and stuff, because sadly, those might be the John and Jane that hunt you down later on if, if things go wrong if you fail any more missions or if you you get tired of this and you want out it's like that could be a uh, uh, it could be a scary situation so i don't know just like you showing them too much you know i don't know like i said it's just you wouldn't think much of it but it probably puts things in perspective when they say the line of yeah we've had to kill other john and james and it's like probably cha it retroactively changes all of that sure but it's kind of like oh okay kind of it was always real. There's always this danger. It's always been like, yeah, this is what we signed up for. But, it, like, shit really hits the fan when you kind of put things in perspective like that of, like, oh, so the company isn't afraid of wiping us out. We don't never, you know, they probably try not to think about it too much of what happens if we fail two more times. Probably not trying to think about it too much, but it's like, now you probably know. You've actually met the consequences of potentially failing twice, uh, two more times of, oh, cool, some other John and Jane will come and pop us. Potentially, you know, so. Luckily, they didn't get too comfortable where they didn't end up dropping some things. Because obviously, the whole thing about I, I love that whole Eminem conversation. Because it's like, yeah, Eminem was like, yo, one time during a festival, he was telling everyone to fuck, say, fuck your mom, fuck you, mom. And everyone, and, and uh, John was like, whoa, come on, like, you know, we we're all pause or a silence. Like, uh, come on, bro, like, talk to your mom, like, your your grown man fix. Which is so, it's so meta having like Donald Glover have that conversation, which is so interesting. Uh, as, a, as a musician himself. But part of me is like, because I've never seen it land. I've heard nothing but good things. I'm sure that came up from time to time where they talked about other artists. And because like, that re that show revolves around the music biz to some extent, kind of in, in a similar vein as like Dave, not tonally speaking, but maybe tonally speaking. I don't know. But like, that's where I'm like, it probably came up in Atlanta as well. But I just, that just, it was so wild to me. Because it's like, yeah, John loves his mom. Um, uh, what I thought was so interesting, it's like, oh yeah, John's obsessed with mom. He's like, no, I'm not obsessed. I just, you know, I love my mom. And it's just like, yeah, it's actually really sweet. And, um, but that led to that whole, like, what, I'm, what I was talking about earlier is didn't let it slip that he's still in contact with mom. Like, Jay knows to keep that, like, they know to keep that hush. It's like, oh, we're comfortably around you guys, but you guys seem like you might be sticklers for the rules in some capacities and not so much in others we'll get to that later but it's like don't certain information you don't want because jane met max and it's like you're not gonna be like oh yeah max that's my cat but it's just it's so interesting because the two things they both kept from their personal lives came up of course um during the conversations but it's still kind of like a yeah we do have common enough sense not to like mention that because that's like that's a thing we both know we need to keep secret so like even though we just met this cool couple we don't know how cool they are so let's not you know divulge some of that it was interesting to get that perspective of we don't know like they're not completely completely detached to some extent because they were like yeah even now it seems like after a mission, after killing some people or whatever, it does seem like it still takes a toll on you, even years into it. It probably, you get a little, um, 
I guess you get a little used to it, but they made it. I don't. I don't know if that was them just trying to like be like. It, it felt sincere when they were like, yeah, it's, it still gets to you. It always kind of will. Like it, that feeling of being kind of messed up after a mission that doesn't go away. There was kind of some, some sincerity in that. But once again, them also talking about how dangerous things could be. Where, hey, there's this mission where we were supposed to break someone out and uh, out of prison. No backup, no phone or nothing. It's like, well, how'd you get through it? He's like, well... I'm going to tell you the one thing I wish someone had told me when we started out. Breathing. If you can control your breathing, you can control anything in life. So, they're like, wow, that's it's powerful. Which I'd love the conversation about that later, but we'll, we'll get to that. What was so interesting, though, is like they, the other John and Jane are like, oh, yeah, we're actually on the mission. It's like, whoa, 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 you came to hang out and you're on a known mission? Oh, you got to go? Oh, that's kind of a bummer. Why don't you guys come along with us? It's super high risk. This way you get to test out the waters, and once the mission's done, we'll kind of split the money, you know? But this is this way you get to decide whether or not, you know, super high risk is something you're even interested in. So they go along with them. I love the whole conversation. They're like, okay, let's get ready. Um, oh, wait. Do you, do you think the cheese plate was too much? It's like, no, they loved it. It's like, no, but they, they barely touched it. It's like, no, they loved it. Like, I think the apricot chicken was too much. She's like, no, no, no. What's that? He's like, no, nah, I think people don't people don't like sweet chicken, which I do. Uh, but he was like, yeah, I, I won't prepare that uh, next time. And she's like, no, 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 they ate it. I was like, it was this, this sweet thing of just them both being so insecure. Like, oh, did I mess up by bring, putting that out? It's like, no, 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 honey, that was great. It was just, I don't know, like, once again, it's like the little relationship moments they have is so adorable and cute. Uh, so they go on this mission. They're excited. She had even pointed out, like, yeah, I think they're downstairs getting pumped for this mission by drink, uh, doing some coke. So it's like, Jesus. It's like, should you? I, I was kind of scared. This felt. This episode felt like, you know, to some extent, it kind of feels like a little bit of a Barry episode, uh, just because you're like, man, it feels like this could specifically, kind of like tonally speaking and vibe wise, just because obviously you know the show changes as it goes on, but it kind of gave me like season one Barry vibes, where I was just like. Yeah, this kind of felt like the Taylor situation. You know how that, situ- if you've seen Barry, you know how that situation plays out. I was kind of worried of it kind of playing out like that. In fact, I thought it was going to play out very much like that. Um, the Taylor Chris situation, not how things played out in the Chris department, but more so like the lead up to that. Like, because what was it, episode, the Chris situation episode, what, episode six? The Taylor stuff was like five, or was it like the Taylor stuff was six and the Chris stuff was seven? I don't remember now. But you, I'm trying to keep it as vague as possible. But I hope, if you're familiar with Barry, I hope you know what I'm talking about. But I'm like, I kind of wondered if it was going to be a similar situation to that with them kind of coked out and like ready to do this mission. Like, ooh, I'm just like, things are probably going to go super sideways. But it's like, oh yeah, it's some delivery, but it's super high risk. And they're kind of like, okay, like, Jane seems like she's more okay with this. John's kind of like, ugh. And so when they get there, it's like, oh, cool, we got these bags. All right, let's go. And then only our John and Jane get in. It's like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? It's like, no, 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 you guys go ahead. It'll be, it'll be fun. And I don't know why you do the dickish thing of like, I don't know if you guys are always like this or is it just because you're coked out of your minds and you're just so riding a high because you're like, you're jumping someone into the deep end thinking, oh, it's going to be fine. And literally tell them, hey, don't bring your cell phones, leave them inside the helicopter. But you're saying that with the door closed, with the as loud as a helicopter is, it was like, that's a, and then when the helicopter's taking off, they're dancing, and just kind of celebrating, like, almost, oh, like, yeah, you got this, it's like, you guys are assholes for doing that, so it's like, cool, so John and Jane are kind of like, taking it with stride, like, alright, let's do this, um, and their mission was to drop off something, but the people were not happy to see them, and proceeded to like, strip them down, and we're just like, okay, and it, to the point, it got scary. It was like, oh my god, uh, I love, if, no matter what happens, I love you. It's like, I love you too. Managed to kill their way out of that situation and got out. Because the, the helicopter dude was like, oh yeah, I'm going to be back in 30 minutes sharp. So, back on the helicopter, covered in blood, wearing different clothes because they were stripped down completely. So, you're like, Jesus. Get a FaceTime from uh, the other Smiths. And it's like, oh, what happened? It's like, yeah, the boss came in. It's like, wait, the captain? It's like, yeah. They were, they were expecting you, not us. And just like the dead, like the dead pan expression on our John's face, just because it's like, it's almost like he wants to curse him out, but he's trying to be cool. He's trying to be, it's cool. It's like, nah, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, the one with the children, it's like children. And I think I thought it was so interesting when Smith was like, 
uh, Jane was like, oh, they were like, uh, they're not children. They're like 17 or 19, which, you know, relatively speaking for some people, it's like, oh, you, a lot of people who are older, even in your 30s, would be like a 17 or 19 year old. You'd be like, oh, that person's a kid, you know, because that person's like, like, like half your life or whatever, like a little over half your life. Uh, I mean, a little under, sorry, half your life. But either way. And she's like, well, it must not have been too bad. You know, kids, I mean, it's, they're easier. Well, 17, 19 year olds, they couldn't put up much of a fight. So she, it's like, no, we didn't kill the kids. We just killed the captain. It's like, oh, what What did he say? It's like, he, he killed the captain with a machete. And Jane's like, shit. It's like, and, but then it's kind of like, ooh, they kind of fucked that up. Like, they won't blow back that back on us. And it's like, oh, maybe we should kind of keep some distance. It's like, I can hear you on the other side. But it's like, cool, it's fine. It's like, no, 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 you take all the money. And John was almost kind of bugged by me. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure, take take all the money. Yeah, like, oh, we'll see you guys soon. It's like, yep. So the call ends. It's like, yep, buddy. And he's like, oh, 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 oh wait. John, John, you got to hear this before we go, John. <sighs> Eminem opened up a, a restaurant called Mom's Spaghetti. It's like, oh, it's coming up. He's like, yeah, man. I really want to, yeah, oh, I get it, we, we, we connected over Eminem and stuff, that's, that's great, that's awesome, that's amazing to do, it's, it's not the time, and it's like, okay, just compartmentalizing where it's just kind of like, hey, we want to decompress after that fucking horrible situation that went bad, it went really, really bad, and uh, you up here want to talk about Eminem right now, no, I'm not about that, and so, they end up getting the money, which I think is so interesting, because if you look at it, Jane staring at the phone, because out of anyone, she made it clear she was the one that was more interested in this super high risk. So it's just this moment of Jim's like her staring at the phone and kind of looking at him who's staring at her. And it's like, I don't know, she feels kind of like, oh, am I fucked up for like enjoying the fact that it's like, oh, this is a good chunk of money. But was it worth it in the end? Kind of getting thrown into the deep end. But it's also the fact is that I think it plays into the conversation they have in like the next scene or two where she was watching a video. And he's like, what are you trying to do? What are you doing? And she's like. I'm trying to cry. I'm trying to like cry. And it's like, because he had called her a robot. He was like, I'm sorry. I, I know you're not a robot. I didn't, I didn't mean to call you that. But they also had this really, really, oh, before that, like he called her out for gaslighting. He was like, yo, I mean, he's like, you're not a robot because you get jealous. She's like, I don't get jealous. He's like, Rooney had two hands and she always has. It's like, yeah, but you, he's like, no, nah, if you had waited, like I would have thought you were bullshitting me. Like if you had waited like 15 minutes to tell me that, but it's like, uh, at that time, but it's like, no, you jumped on it immediately and gaslit me. That's what, that's what sold the gaslighting was because you said it so confidently and so immediately. Cause if you had waited, I knew you were stewing on that and it was bullshit, but like, yeah, you, you got me immediately. But then it came up the whole conversation of, you know, love. Cause she's like, you said you love me. It's like, yeah, you did too. And she's like, yeah, but we were about to die. And she's like, do you mean it? Did you mean it? She's like, no, I, I meant it. And he's like, well, say it. And she's like, I loved you. And he's like, all right, cool. Which I was like, I, once again, it's just a little moment. So I'm like, oh, that's so adorable. And it's like, I love you too, Jane. And I was like, she's like, oh, God, this is stupid. And then they proceed to shit on that couple. It's like, yeah, I hate the, that couple. Oh, my God, they're the absolute worst. It's like, oh, my God, why did we think they were cool? I don't know why. On oh, that sneezing three times. Okay, like, yeah, one or two, you probably like, um, yeah, okay, I'll believe it. But the third one is like, no, you had to just because it's a whole thing. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, she's like, oh, God. And that third one, he probably like had to fake it. It's like, yes, because it was like, oh, my God, everyone's watching the threes. I got to do it. It's like, oh, because of the accent. He was like. And they were making fun of him saying, like, oh, the one thing I learned in life is breathing. And they're like, yeah, the thing we've been doing our entire life, we were listening to it like, oh, my God, this is some magical sage advice. It was some stupid bullshit. I love that. I love them kind of shitting on that couple. I, I thought that was so – I mean, that's once again, it's like these little little relationship things, which I think is so funny. Where it's just like you found out, wow, why did we think that couple was so cool? They're really not. They're not cool at all. In fact, they suck. They suck so much ass. You know, it's just it, – it's fun. It's just, it's such a, a, like, such a natural blend of relationship stuff that they fold into, once again, this, like, wow, crazy, bombastic situation of, like, yeah, you kind of do some, like, kill people, you do this type of work, but you have these little relationship moments, which I think are so, feel so genuine and real and nice, and I, I, I just think that's so beautiful. I'm curious, is this the only time we're going to run into that other 
John and Jane, or will they run into a different John and Jane? We'll have to ultimately wait and see, but I'm excited to see uh, where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.